Hello everybody, I hope you are doing well. In this video we are going to talk about the monetary school, which we already started, but in this video we are going to continue. So this is going to be video number three, and in this video we are going to include two main ideas of the, of the school. We are going to talk a little bit more about the quantity tier of money, and then we are going to talk about the Phillips curve for this school. So let's start with the key idea number one. So the quantity theory of money. So we have talked about this, uh, the quantity equation. So one of the conclusions of the quantity equation for the monetary school is that changes in PQ, which is uh, money income, uh, which also we call PT, uh, these changes are gonna come from changes in uh, the amount of money in the economy, not from changes in the demand like uh, uh, the Keynesian school proposed. Also, <clears throat> M is going to affect PQ with a lag. That means that uh, if we increase the money supply in the economy, that is not going to be reflected automatically in money income. It's going to take some time for the, for the money to go through the economy through different channels. Some parts of the economy are going to be more affected than others, but it's going to take some time. It's going to take several, maybe months, several days, weeks, months, in order to have that effect. And the other thing is that uh, changes in the money supply can destabilize the economy. They can uh, affect uh, prices. They can affect signals in the market. Uh, they can create uh, high uh, periods of inflation and even hyperinflations, and that can destabilize the economy. So Friedman proposed uh, a monetary rule, uh, which is increasing the amount of money in the economy in a pretty uh, standard way, consistent way, at the same amount every, mo every month, every year, according to the, uh, to the expected rate of growth of the economy. Um, so for example, if the economy was going to increase, let's say 3%, the GDP of the economy, then probably the money supply should increase 3% every year. So the key idea number two is that the monetaries are gonna talk about expectations augmented Phillips curve. So uh, the, the Phillips curve, as we remember, was a relationship between money wages and unemployment. And the relationship that uh, William Phillips found was a negative relationship and this idea was then included into the Keynesian thinking. But Milton Freeman said changes in money wages or inflation were not only related to unemployment, but they can also be affected or be related to what we call expected rate of inflation. How much inflation is expected by, by agents or individuals in the economy. So this implies that there is not only one Phillips curve, there can be many Phillips curve at different levels of inflation. So here we have a, a graph and I'm gonna explain the graph now. So um, let's say for example, that there is an increase in the money supply in the economy. So if the money supply increases, then uh, prices are gonna increase. But one assumption for, for Milton Friedman was that uh, wages are going to increase as well, but less than the ch than changes in prices. So if this happens, then the real wage is going to go down. And when real wages go down, then companies are going to hire more workers because it is, it is less costly to hire these workers. So unemployment is going to go down from point A to point B, right? In point B, we have higher inflation, higher money wages, but we have less unemployment. So there is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment in this very short term. So, but as time passes, uh, workers are gonna notice that prices of products have increased, but their wages didn't, didn't increase as much. So they are going to ask for increasing wages. In, for, in, they are gonna ask companies to increase wages. And when wages increase, then uh, the, the real wage is going to increase as well. And then we are going to go back to point C. We are going to shift the short term Phillips curve to, to the short 
term Phillips curve number two. So um, we are going to end up in point C, which is just higher inflation. Uh, the general level of prices has uh, increased, but there is no more change in unemployment. So in the very short term, yes, we moved from, from, from point A to point B, but then we moved to point C. And, and then we end up with an with a almost kind of vertical long-term Phillips curve. Um, so if we look at this, uh, this graph a little bit more, um, in the upper level of the graph, we have unemployment less than the natural rate of unemployment. So UN is the natural rate of unemployment. So in that region of the graph, um, to the left of the long-term Phillips curve, we have that unemployment is lower than the natural rate of unemployment. And then in the Phillips curve, in the long-term Phillips curve, we have that unemployment is equal to the natural rate of unemployment. And then to the, to the right of the long-term Phillips curve, we have that unemployment is higher than, than the natural rate of unemployment. The natural rate of unemployment is like the, like the unemployment rate that the, characterizes the economy, like the, the real uh, factors of the economy are organized in such a way that that is the, the natural rate of unemployment of the economy. So in the same way, uh, if we look at the line below the, below the unemployment line, we have that uh, changes in prices are going to be higher than changes in expected prices to the left of this um, of this graph. So that means that people that the, the actual inflation in the economy is higher than the expected prices. So that can lead companies to produce more because they were expecting a level of inflation which is lower than actual inflation. So they, they might actually produce more because they might think that prices are increasing for their products. So they are going to produce more and as a consequence, they are going to hire more people and they are going to reduce unemployment. So that happens to the left side of the graph. So what are some implications of this analysis? Well, one implication is like a long term Phillips curve is vertical. Uh, another one is that there might be a trade off only in the short term trade-off between inflation and unemployment. But if, if inflation is fully anticipated, uh, if people are expecting the level of inflation, which is actually equal to the real level of inflation, then uh, there is no change in unemployment. Only when these kind of expectations are different between actual prices and expected prices, which is what we can call money illusion, then uh, there can be a short-term decrease in unemployment. So the long-term Phillips curve will be more like the like the classical kind of a, um, aggregate supply, meaning that if there is an increase in in the in money, uh, that is going to lead to increase in prices only. So in the long term, uh, the monetary school will be will coincide with the classical school. Okay, now we continue with the key idea number two, adaptive expectations. So in the past slide, we talked a lot about expectations. So there is a, a lot of discussion in macroeconomics about how people form expectations. If expectations are so important, how people kind of um, create ideas about their future in their minds, uh, then uh, there was and still is a lot of discussion of how agents and individuals are going to form expectations. In the current crisis that we are facing, the coronavirus crisis, um, how people are, are uh, forming expectations about the near future or about what's going to happen after the crisis, right? How do we, um, what kind of information, what kind of processes goes into our mind in order to form expectations? And that is not purely an economical phenomenon, that can be also a psychological phenomenon. So adaptive expectations is a specific kind of expectations where inflation is based on past experiences. Another uh, idea here is that if governments or through monetary policy or fiscal policy consistently 
want to have a rate of unemployment which is less than the natural rate of unemployment, that is that is that means that they have to increase government spending, monetary policy, then people are gonna adjust expectations, then unemployment is gonna go up again. And if the governments keep doing this, that can lead to high inflation and even hyperinflation. So again, for Friedman, inflation is always a monetary phenomenon, right? Uh, if there is increase in the money supply in the long term, and even in the short term, that is going to be reflected in higher level of prices. In the 1970s, uh, there was a specific period of time in which we have high levels of uh, inflation, uh, high prices of oil, high inflation, and also high unemployment. So this damaged the idea that there was a trade-off between inflation and unemployment, especially in the long term. Another idea, important idea, is that if increasing M, the money supply, can decrease unemployment in the short term, that also means that decreasing M can increase unemployment. So if for some reason there is a reduction in the money supply in the economy, that can lead to an increased uh, unemployment in the short term. And the last point that I want to make in this slide is that um, in order to align changes in M with uh, changes in W, which is money wages, so changes in money supply with changes in, in wages, some countries have adopted indexation. That means that they have indexed the money wages with the rate of inflation so that real wages don't uh, go down in periods of high inflation and that is going to reduce the effect of um, money illusion. Okay, I'm going to stop here and we are going to continue on the monetary school in our next slide. Thank you.